Hollywood's a town of legends, and growing up in Hollywood, I was raised on legends, and one of my favorites is Jean Harlow. I was fascinated by the tales my mom, Tippi Hedren, and her friends would tell, old timers at parties. Everyone adored Harlow. They said she married a man who couldn't make love to her on their wedding night, and later he killed himself. They said she was madly in love with William Powell, but he wouldn't marry her and it broke her heart. They talked about how she died of kidney failure when she was just 26, because her mother, who was supposedly a Christian scientist, refused to let her see a doctor. I didn't really care if the stories were 100% true. It was the legend that got me. It was all so tragic. I also loved Jean Harlow's movies, still do. I first saw Harlow in Dinner at Eight, and I was mesmerized by this platinum blonde Venus goddess. She was curvaceous like a woman in a Rubens painting. But when Jean Harlow opens her mouth, what comes out doesn't exactly match her physique. Pop, you go to bed and sleep it off, will ya? She sounds like a waitress from New Jersey. <laughs> well, here goes for another day's work, and I'm dead on my feet already. Obviously, Harlow didn't go for any speech coaches, and I think that is very cool. MGM changed her eyebrows, but they didn't change her voice. And that contrast between the way she sounds and the way she looks became part of her personality on screen. Little Molly Cottontail went hippity hop, hippity hop, hippity hop, hip. Bread. Most of the time, Harlow played a girl from the wrong side of the tracks the gangster mall, the scheming secretary, the prostitute, and with a touch of exhibitionism. Hey! How many times have I told you to let down those curtains? Why? They've all gone off to work. That was pretty gutsy for a girl back in the 1930s. But even when she's playing these brazen creatures, her vulnerability and her heart shine through. That combination, I think, made her fans go absolutely crazy for her. Harlow struggled in her early movies. I know they're after you. You've got to go away. You must protect yourself. But later, she hit her stride in comedies. <laughs> She is so irresistible in front of the camera. She's so cute. Sweetheart. Well, uh, what is it, Hartley? The movie Bombshell is kind of a glimpse at what life was like for Harlow. Hey, where's Clark? Isn't he working in this with me? The clock's on 15 till noon. She totally pokes fun at herself. Her frustration with her freeloading relatives. I get away from me, all of you. You're nothing but a pack of leeches. The press, the fans hounding her. Even her longing for children. Why don't we get married like we should have done in the first place? Lola. And have lots of little babies. All in a day's work in the topsy-turvy world of a movie star. A glamorous bomb, shall I? A glorified chump, that's what I've been. Being a sex symbol is so much fun, definitely better than playing the wallflower. She got to make movies with Clark Gable. He was so handsome. Oh my God, wasn't he? They made six movies together. Harlow must have had a blast. At the peak of her career, Harlow was one of the biggest stars at MGM, right up there with Joan Crawford and Greta Garbo. She became an icon, the first blonde bombshell. Before there was Marilyn Monroe, there was Harlow. But sex symbols don't have it easy. Immediately, you're labeled as not being particularly intelligent. I was reading a book the other day. And you're rarely the first pick for serious parts. I'm sure that that wasn't easy for her. That's what makes Wife versus Secretary such an interesting Harlow film. It was her big break in a serious good girl part, and she proved she had the makings of a solid, dramatic actress. Tomorrow, you're taking me to Bermuda as a friend. But it won't go on like this. Pretty soon he'll want to buy me things. That's how it always starts. And then it'll be too late. Because if he ever turns to me, I won't turn away. I think that if Jean Harlow had lived, she would have become an even better actress. I mean, she was just a kid. I like to believe her great heart and that freshness would have survived. And I hope she would have found a great love. But we'll never know. And that's what makes her a legend. It's sad, you know? I don't hear people talk about Harlow anymore. I don't want her to fade away. Thank goodness for her movies. There, she's radiant and always will be.
For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Melanie Griffith. Jean Harlow, the ultimate bombshell, ignites the screen as our star of the month. Tuesday, beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern, here on Turner Classic Movies.